Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for your email and DMs, your support and everything else. Okay, this past weekend I delved into a lot of different things. You see, my ADHD is the reason why I become stubborn and obstinate when there is something I have to do. I can spend hours doing what I want to do, but give me a deadline or tell me I have to do something and I'll want to do everything but. So I had a deadline for Monday morning and thus true to form, I got into a million other things. I watched Diana in her own words. I read three or four days worth of express articles and so on. But lo and behold, I managed the deadline too. I got it all done and sent off before lunchtime on Monday. But let's get back to the video. In my opinion, there are a lot of strange things happening around the royal family and some more ridiculous than others. Last year, a judge ruled that Prince Philip's will would be sealed and kept private for at least 90 years. The Guardian challenged the decision, but on Friday, judges rejected their claim. Now, before everyone jumps on the bandwagon and make assumptions, wills in the United Kingdom are usually public record. However, it had been common practice to keep the wills of the royal family members secret. Now, one can argue that if everyone's wills are public record, then why not Prince Philip's? But I understand the sensitivity of certain wills, such as Prince Philip and the Queen, and even other public or political figures. And quite frankly, I feel that no will, not even yours or mine, is anyone else's business. There are so many rumours now flying around after Prince Philip's death and I find it grossly unfair and unjust. What does the Guardian want to learn from Prince Philip's will? So what if he left, say, an unknown woman some money? The media will immediately jump to the conclusion that it was a mistress. So what if it was? It will not change anything. It will not change the line of succession or anything concerning the royal family. And what will they do about it now? So what if he left one child or one grandchild more than, say, the others? All it will do to discover such things will be to hurt his 96-year-old wife and children. And that is if there is something nefarious in the will. In my opinion, the Guardian overstepped on this for the sake of, or hope of, creating sensation, and without considering the possible hurt it may cause those still living. The same, in my opinion, applies to Andrew Loney, who spent five years battling the cabinet office to open the archives and give him full access to the diaries of Lord and Lady Mountbatten. He gained access to 35,000 pages of the diaries, but some of the content had been redacted because it revealed personal information about the Queen and Prince Philip, which, of course, is protected under the privacy law, and quite rightly so in my opinion. I cannot understand some people's obsession with what goes on behind the closed doors of others. Yes, I understand the public wanting to know about the business dealings of the royal family. Yes, I understand us wanting to know about the legitimacy of Harry and Meghan's children, for instance because in some way and long term it will affect the British people and Commonwealth. But what they talk about, what the relationship is like behind closed doors, is not our business. 
Okay, so let's talk for a while about William and Catherine. We saw both of them out and about this past weekend. Catherine was in Plymouth, where she was part of Team Great Britain, who incidentally won the race in the friendly Grand Prix sailing regatta. As always, she looked stunning, happy and in her element. We actually expected her and William and one of the children at least to attend the football final between the British Lionesses and Germany. But William attended alone, although he did put out a short video of him and Charlotte wishing them luck. I, like most of you, am always thrilled to see the Cambridges out and about, but often I wish I could somehow communicate with them as I often feel that I can correctly anticipate things in advance. No, <laughs> I'm not psychic. I just understand human nature. So what am I talking about? Well, right in the beginning, when I first heard that William was taking the Earth Shot Prize to the United States this year, I said it was a big mistake. But many of my subscribers kicked my butt for it. But now, as we are heading into the latter part of this year, I am actually seeing that various media outlets are coming out with exactly what I anticipated them to come out with. I expected them to point out the hypocrisy of the Cambridges flying to the United States after the many trips and flights of the royal family during this jubilee year. And I anticipated that the Sussexes would be drawn into it. And as anticipated, it is indeed happening. Of course, there is renewed speculation as to whether Harry and Meghan will support the event or whether they will pull a rabbit out of the hat in an effort to overshadow it. Of course, there is speculation whether the Cambridges and Sussexes will meet up for talks on neutral ground, so to speak. And of course, this keeps the Sussexes in the headlines. Those headlines they so constantly crave. Then it is also clear that the Americans are growing increasingly tired of the Sussexes, which most of them still consider royals. They feel that the Sussexes are saturating the media, so it is likely that by the end of the year the Cambridge's visit to the United States will not get the media attention or then at the very least, the media sales as anticipated. I also hear that many Crown and Commonwealth countries such as Australia, but others as well, feel slighted and that citizens feel that William should get his priorities right and lend his support and attention to countries where the British monarch is still head of state rather than running off to the United States. The counter argument is that the United States is where the money is and of course contributions to the work of the earth shot endeavor is of some significant importance. However, according to the people I spoke to, this does not hold water for them, as Earthshot already has wealthy and celebrity support, and that the prize-giving event is purely the giving back part. The British themselves, the ones I spoke to, have similar opinions. With the inflation rate having risen to approximately 9.1%, the highest in 40 years, the British feel that it is the royal family's duty to promote Britain as much as they can. So guys, I hope you get it, namely 
that this is me reporting on what I see, read, and hear from subscribers, friends, and the media. However, although the Earthshot Prize Giving event in Boston does not affect me, I fully understand everyone I spoke to's point of view. And like I said, I predicted this reaction and only wish I had William's ear sooner. Okay, guys and girls, so I will be back as soon as possible with some more royal and other news. As I said, I did a lot of research and reading over the weekend, so I have a number of different and diverse things I would like to speak to you about in the coming days. So until we meet again on the next video, please take good care of yourselves. Bye!